Now, here's something that I, I really want to dive into, I think is really overlooked, is intent versus intensity. Now, going back to my slides previously, we talked about acceleration being 90 plus percent, okay? That is the relative intensity of the activity. But the intent of said activities are always sky high. We are always intently sprinting with maximal effort. While we may not be sprinting maximally from maybe a speed standpoint or maybe an output standpoint, our effort will always be maximum, okay? Even from a technical standpoint, the effort is always maximum in what we do. But that being said, intensity is relative. You can manipulate the intensity of an activity via the complexity of the activity and via the context of how that activity is taking place, all right? Are we doing a standing start, which from a complexity standpoint is a pretty general start? Or are we doing a full on block start, which is on the other end of the spectrum, which is way more complex in nature? Because you're, you're, you have, now you're involving four points on the ground instead of two. Now you're in a, in a bent, bent position. Now you're adding an external element of a block, right? Now let's go down. Are we, are we in trainers? Or are we in spikes? That can invent, it, it, uh, affect the intensity and the output. And again, something I've mentioned previously, are we going by ourselves, or are we within a group? Just from an adrenaline standpoint, there's a whole nother element when you start getting in a gun with your teammates. There's a whole nother piece to that. So I, I could go on, but here, those are four quick example of, examples of, you know, controlling the intensity by different elements, right? But with all of those activities, our intent is always through the roof, okay? So we always have to keep in mind the output might be at 90%, 92%, what have you, but that intent is always 100 to 140%, all right? So this is something from an article I wrote a few years ago, but it's, it's tried and true today, looking at things from the top down, okay? So this is an example of developing acceleration and looking at the complexity and context of an activity. So uh, if you wanna do something, if you wanna start with acceleration, something at the top that's really general and the least intense on the intensity spectrum, just a standing start. Just going from a standing start, just simply stand there and push. It's pretty simple, but then we can progress downward. We're still general, but a little more intensity. So we could be doing a standing start still, but we could add a sled, we could, be pushing a prowler. We could be accelerating up a hill to add an intensity aspect, right? But it's still relatively general. Then we go down a little bit more, so we're more complex in nature, more specific. Now we're getting on the ground doing a three-point start. So now we add an element of being bent over. We have to unbend. We have to unbend. We have to push our body up and rise. And then you can add intensity with a slit. Yeah. Then we progress downward more. Now we put the second hand on the ground with four point starts, right? Now we're getting more and more specific. No blocks yet, there's no external component, but we're at four, so it's even more complex. Now you have more limbs to involve. Then at the bottom, probably in our sport, the most intense, intense thing you can do is an actual block start. And then from there, now you're at the element of, are you doing them in spikes? Are you doing them in trainers? Are you doing them by yourself? Are you doing them with a group? So the reason I tend, and many coaches tend to start with a stand is it's the most accessible thing that we can do because at the end of the day how often can I expose my athletes to these positions all right because it's not just okay I'm running a 10 20 30 today but are we getting accurate positions often so for me it's how can I make it easier for athletes to feel these positions and then progress downwards so they figure out their own path to get to these positions and just so for high school coaches that are watching you doing this, the question often is when you have such huge groups, you know, Gabe talked about, you have 30 people in a group, and sometimes you wish you only had 30 people in, on a day. Look at these exercises, these progressions that he's teaching and think, like, this is where you get into the, you know, the year one kid and the year four kid. You're teaching the same intent, you're teaching the same intensity, you, it, you're teaching the same big rock things, but you can have the year four kid doing some of the more advanced stuff where you have the year one kids doing the less advanced stuff. But when you have a big toolbox of different options for, and you understand what you are trying to teach, you can uh, group individualize so that everyone's getting the appropriate 
activity for their skill level. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, let me go back. Um, so example, as you mentioned with teeth, as you're say, pointing out, I mean, so for instance, you've got a bunch of first years, they have like, they have to master this. They have to get the idea of like, I just need to push and project. If you can't effectively do this from a stand, there's no way that you're going to be able to effectively do it from a three point. You're just not. So as you're alluding to a T, don't think, okay, we're going to do three points because that's what we're supposed to do. Okay. You can introduce it. There's no problem with that because from a pedological standpoint, you do have to have a little bit of storming going on, but you know, if, if all you're doing is three points on that day or four points or block starts because, you know, oh, we you got a meet coming up or that's the point in the season, Rad, that's the training cycle, uh, then you, you're just trying to copy the cookbook. You're trying to copy and paste. This is where you can say, hey, all right, you know, you JV freshmen and or people with this certain skill set, you guys are going to be doing standing starts today for our, for our sprints. You guys, we're going to be, this group is going to be doing three points. It's going to be a little more complex, a little more intense. So again, this is where the nuance comes in and the, the art comes in of coaching with the science. So now here's an example of a, of a complex section session. So here's an acceleration complex that involves teaching. And what, so let's say for me, um, I really want them to get a good feel of that posted position primarily on step one. And it, whereas they're still a little beat up maybe from the weekend, but we still need to wake up a little bit. So this is a session that is intense because we're dealing with acceleration, but it's not as intense as we're not going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, in spikes. Uh, we're not going to be doing starts in groups. Um, we're, we're not going to be going very far down the track. So here's one example of an Excel complex. So we'll go skips for height. Again, feeling that long contact pattern from the skip for height. Superset it with a walk drop in. So again, making it less intense, getting the getting in motion, and then from there, getting that feeling of just posting. In step one. So now here, not only are we looking at it from a, a, a system development standpoint of acceleration CNS, but there's a lot of technical teaching going on with the different activities going on here. And I'll bet you a nickel to a donut is a phrase my father likes to say. Um, this is going to be pretty engaging, especially for a lot of your younger athletes, because it's not the simple, okay, 10, 20, 30, 20, 30, 40 times three, blah, 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 blah. Like, th this is fairly involved so your athletes are going to be pretty engaged with these activities and you know you've got a large group you can do a lot of this with large with large group settings and it can be relatively effective you can get a lot of co-coaching going on so again this is where a bit of the art comes in now when you do these when, when you do these complexes gabe do you um you know have maybe two or three different complexes for different skill levels or do you just sort of take the idea and then you can go, you know? I, I typically take the idea. I typically take the idea and I fit it to the group based on what I think we need. And then I get a little more nuanced if like we're, we need to do, if we're doing block starts, but I have an athlete that, uh, you know, is just having, is having a lot of trouble with step one. So if, if we're supposed to do block starts, I'm like, you know what, we, we got we to gotta revisit the posted position. You're only doing half starts today. And I might single that, that one or two people out. You know, if I got a big group, again, you could have a complex where you have, okay, this group at this part of the complex are doing full block starts. This part of the group, you guys are doing half starts because you haven't earned the right to go from the bottom because I hate what I see from the bottom, right? So again, it's kind of what you see, what is put before you and be a coach and say, oh yeah, these, this group is not, they're not effectively getting blocks in because they're not, they don't feel that posted position, then don't ask them to do something that they can't effectively do yet. 